Prime Minister Andrei Plenkovich is due to address the UN General Assembly today. While in New York, the Prime Minister met with his Slovenian counterpart Miro Cerar and confirmed that the two leaders would meet in Zagreb next week. Plenkovich said he was confident Croatia and Slovenia could resolve their outstanding issues and specifically the country's ongoing border dispute. Last night, an event was held to mark the 25th anniversary of Croatia's membership of the United Nations. Earlier in the afternoon, Prime Minister Andrei Plenković gave a lecture at Columbia University in the World Leaders Forum about Croatia's perspective on the future of the European Union. During his speech, Plenković spoke about the negative consequences of Euroscepticism and emphasized that membership of the Schengen border area and Eurozone were Croatia's next targets. Today, the trade agreement between Canada and the European Union, known as CETA, comes into force. Canada is the European Union's second largest trading partner, and CETA, which was seven years in the making, is expected to increase that trade by 26 billion euros a year. Almost 99% of the tariffs, levies and taxes which had burdened trade with Canada as of today have been removed. For more delicate goods like beef, pork and dairy products, the agreement prescribes quotas so as not to undermine the price of those goods on European markets. The political divisions within the biggest opposition Social Democratic Party are becoming more and more visible. Peja Garbin, a member of the party's presidency, has called for new internal elections by the end of the year, claiming that the current leadership doesn't enjoy the support of the majority of SDP members. SDP leader Davor Bernadic has responded by claiming on his Facebook page that the opposition he now faces within the party is connected with his call for a commission to investigate the agricor debt crisis, and that due to this there is now a conspiracy against him. The Flood Crisis Committee in Ogulin has been disbanded and the Croatian soldiers who were on standby there with amphibious vehicles have now left the town. The Red Cross are continuing to provide aid to the worst hit households. A thousand buildings were flooded after the river Dobra burst its banks, including 480 residential houses and apartments. Estimates of the cost of the damage caused are now being prepared. Ogolin's mayor, Dalibor Domitrovic, has said that there are grounds to begin the process of declaring a state of natural disaster, claiming that the cost of the damage caused is 30 million kuna. The State Commission for Natural Disaster Damage Assessment concluded yesterday that the 20 million kuna allocated for cleanup and relief efforts this year was not enough. Croatia has 20 counties plus the city of Zagreb and all of them except for Istria County have submitted claims in excess of 2 billion kuna for some type of natural disaster in 2017. Finance Minister Zdravko Maric has said that the government will try to secure additional funds. The Uber mobile application taxi service can continue to operate in Croatia. As Zagreb court yesterday rejected a motion from the Road Transportation Inspection Office at the Ministry of Transport for the application to be banned in Croatia. This decision can be appealed against within eight days. Sport and in basketball, Zagreb's Cervita have reached the semi-finals of the regional ABA League's Super Cup, defeating FMP 86-68 in Bar yesterday. They will face Mega Bemax in Friday's semi-final. Meanwhile, Zagreb's other major club, Zibona, were beaten in the quarterfinals by Budućnost 96-90 last night. And in the fourth round of play in the regional Southeast European Handball League, Nexe drew with the Slovenian side Gorenje Velenje last night. The score was 24 all. The Macedonian side Vadar is currently first in the standings with 12 points, followed by PPD Zagreb, and Slovenian side Celje, each with 7 points. This afternoon's forecast calls for partly or mainly sunny weather in most parts of the country. It will remain moderately cloudy in eastern inland regions, where there could be still a little rain in places. In northern and eastern regions, there'll be a moderate northwesterly wind in places. There'll be a moderate westerly wind on the coast, with a strong northwesterly wind in places on the open seas. Highest daily temperatures will be between 14 and 19 degrees Celsius inland, between 20 and 23 degrees on the coast. On Friday and Saturday, it'll be partly or mainly sunny inland. Daily temperatures should rise, although the early mornings will be cold, especially in mountainous areas. On Sunday, it'll be changeable with rain or rain showers in places. On the coast, the next two days will be mainly sunny and temperatures will be comfortably warm. On Sunday, it'll be changeable and unstable with rain or rain showers in places, especially along the northern coast. There'll be an occasional moderate westerly and northwesterly wind. 